Yeah. So this one software for slope stability analysis, we can we will be able to incorporate all these things, all these features in the software, like material properties. Obviously, it will must be the support properties like uh, anger capacity, its spacing, seismic load coefficients, line load, distributed load, water table location, tension crack location, tension crack properties. Almost all of the features can be incorporated in this software. So now, having said, uh, having introduced about this software, let me let us go through one uh, uh, case study which uh, we have done for one project in uh, uh, Gujarat, uh, which is uh, strengthening of reservoir embankment. This project came to us after a breaching happened in an industrial complex of Gujarat nearby Surat. And these three reservoirs were constructed. These three reservoirs were, e, were con interconnected by embankments. So there are side embankments and mid embankments. Purpose of the raw water reservoir, which is uh, uh, to serve fiber factory and ancillary purposes of the colony. So all these reservoirs are earthen reservoirs, so total around 20 hectares and 10.5 meter high. This, this total height of the reservoir were not raised in suddenly uh, at a time. This were raised during various historical time, starting from 2000 to 2016. First, they constructed six meter high embankment. Then they raised two meter, 2.5 meter in various times of the history because the population developed and requirement enhanced. And the river was uh, river was the, the source of water for these reservoirs, King River. Combined capacity of the three reservoirs around 20 lakh cubic. One peripheral embankment and intermediate embankment was breached on 10th December 2016. And the breach resulted in minor losses to the property, God's grace. Nothing happened, and no nobody was uh, no no life was uh, uh, affected. So our project was to find out what is the reason of this reservoir breach. We have used GeoSlope software, and we suggested rectification measures after detailed analysis. This is a very interesting and important, and uh, you know very. Uh, this is a very famous uh, industrial complex so we have to be very careful in each and every you know analysis and rectification measures definitely we have to visit the site and we have to, first of all we have to tell the client what was the reason for this reservoir breach what did we do yes first of all we studied the history of this tracing of the embankments you can see the construction year was in 2000 at that time, the survey height was 6.5, embankment height was 5. And suddenly in 2005, again, one more embankment reservoir constructed. 2010, it, the height increased to 8.5. 2011, one more reservoir constructed of 8.5 meter. 2016, again, height was increased to 10.5 meter. December 2016. This happened in Surat. The side embankments you can see here, and here you can see the mid embankments. This is a very important and strategic uh, site. So, unfortunately, I, I would not be able to cover or uh, share all the photos which were available in the site. But I can tell you, they have done. They have done very hard work to prevent uh, the flood formation of flood and uh, you know prevent the uh, chance of any accident by uh, keeping sandbags and everything in order to prevent the water to come out of the breached opening. Yes, then we went through all the documents available. We found out they have done various site studies like field dry density, field moisture content, compaction effort. These were all we have monitored we have monitored all the, these parameters. You can see this 1.63 gram per centimeter cube, 14.5 percentage and 96.5 percentage of compaction effort, 14.5 percentage field moisture content. 
The soil samples collected from the embankment were of CI to CS. There is an organic clay of medium to high plasticity. These are the various in situ parameters, shear strength parameters of the soil, other laboratory values, laboratory test results are also available for. And then we studied on these values. This uh, we study the laboratory test results. And when in order to understand what happens, you know, after the operation, these were all the values. So almost all the laboratory values were before the operation. So we recommend some geotechnical investigations. Again, we suggested to three, four boreholes at the embankment and we have got geotechnical investigations done. Accordingly, we selected this cohesion as 34 kPa, friction angle 88 degree, coefficient of permeability 1 to the power minus 8 meter per second. So first thing we have done to, so now we are trying to simulate the slope before breaching. We simulate it by using slope W software or GeoSwap package. And we have simulated the so this embankment. The various phases of construction were simulated and various phases of operation were simulated. And we have to check whether it is stable or safe. Again, GeoSlope has one more plus Borna, uh, I know, additional software called CW software. And from using this software, we were finding out what are the any you know piping chance of exit gradient we were checking. We were checking the quantity of seepage, maximum velocity in order to find out any problem during you no know, problem arised arisen due to seepage. Another and important aspect, which is to be very much given importance, I think 40 percentage of the slopes in, in earthen dams will fail due to overtopping, which are the which is the main important factor is freeboard. Freeboard is the distance between the height between the top this embankment surface and the top water level. We were also we analyzed this freeboard using Indian Standard 10635. Factors required effective fetch length, wave characteristics, mean set of height above still water level, slope of the dam and roughness of pitching. And considering the surat for a wind speed of 44 meter per second and fetch length of 0.4 kilometer, we did the analysis. What were our observations? And we have done anal based on our analysis, we came to the some deductions. Like this is very important 10.5 meter height construction completed on 1st December. 2016. After three days, the 4th December 2016, then filling was commenced. And 9th December 2016, filling was completed. So what happened? Freeboard of only 500 mm were being provided. So this was noticed from the southern side of the reservoir tree on 10th December, some, you know, indications of breaching were noticed. And some temporary measures were taken by site engineers, fortune because of that seepage were but seepage was continuously going on, but water flow resulted in inundation of the nearby areas and minor losses to property. And this all lead to breach of embankment at midnight on the same day. So, and there is one intermediate, but also between two reservoirs that also failed. And this is the main important point, insufficient freeboard of 500 mm. Another important feature which we observed is that final layer of two meter embankment, the final raising that was constructed not in monolithic with the bottom layer. So what happened, water started coming from the top, it is not having enough strength to resist the water pressure, the body of dam subsequently failed. And seepage failure was also noticed and we have found out there was no any chance of piping through foundation because the foundation embankment was highly impermeable. So this failure also needs sufficient time to develop, but this failure happened suddenly. So there was no any chance of, and we analyzed this uh, stability analysis of soil stability analysis that also we have found that factor safety was also very high. So there are two fa failures which we uh, observed which are likely to happen, one due to overtopping, other to structure failure. This has happened due to sudden drawdown. What will happen? Uh, extremely high water pressure, poor water pressure will be developed. This, due to this, shearing strength of the soil will happen. This is the reason for the failure of mid embankment between reservoir two and three. So structure failure, so many aspects are there. I'm just running. Faulty construction, poor maintenance, compaction. These are all important things to be noticed or to be given importance during the construction. There are constructional 
fault also there at the top because the film material at the top layer it did not get sufficient strength and this is also helps to trigger the overtopping so now uh, we have found, identified the root cause now we have to propose the rectification measure for that again we did the stability analysis with the rectification measures and we have found out the stability and we have found, uh, we have calculated by using indian standard various cases of reservoir we uh, found out stability we did uh, stability analysis using slope w software and seepage analysis by using seep w software and we are proposing so so many strengthening measures were suggested one is concrete lining we are proposing and downstream phase we are proposing to give a uh, uh, grass stuffing and we are also proposed we also proposed 300 mm thick thick crap and grass stuffing stone pitching and where locally there were some steeper slopes there we propose intermediate tie beams and the toe in order to arrest the leakage or anything seepage which will happen in the future we also suggested toe drain with gabion wall and strength and this is very important you know the you are as i said you the top of the embankment is always open and there so many cracks so we propose cracks to be filled with uh, bentonite slurry with proper compaction interlocking pavement blocks and mid embankments we are proposed to remove the uh, loose materials and uh, we uh, sides to be trimmed to a slope of one vertical three horizontal and protected with concrete lining free board we have calculated it has coming around 1.5 meter as per indian standard we proposed to give a very importantly 1.5 meter free board so our conclusion was this insufficient free board and faulty construction and due to non monolithic construction the failure happened and we suggested rectification measures state of art of slope stability analysis so this was just an example of what i have done we have done in the one case i can say that in the past 25 years great strides happened in the area of static stability and deformation analysis the widespread availability of microcomputers causes high change in the computational aspects of slope stability analysis nowadays analysis can be done much more thoroughly more accurately and more quickly so realistic analysis of deformations of slopes not possible until about 25 years ago because we have to go through these our handy uh, handy calculations now it is very much possible with a uh, finite element method our computers so now after one stage is limit equilibrium analysis next stage is finite element method finite element method we will be able to analyze the deformation of slopes so we will be able able to incorporate our constituted models of various structures soils like mohr coulomb uh, drucker prager all can be simulated in finite element method and um, we are able to uh, design our structures and we can be also uh, evaluate the counter measures using the fact safety factor of slope and from the equilibrium of force we will be able to find out safety factor of the slope more detailed design of structures and evaluation of counter measures can be facilitated if it is possible to predict the deformation of the slope so deformation of the slope which is nowadays possible with finite element method but again finite element method has another disadvantage that is it's very difficult to solve large deformation problems so we have another numerical approach that is modeling based on computation fluid dynamics and discrete modeling this is another modeling cft has another uh, it's very not necessary to pay attention so we don't need to be worried about mesh distortion because the mesh is fixed in space and we are assuming the soil to be kind of non newtonian fluids so this cft modeling is a very effective tool for flow problems but very difficult to again to apply to static deformation problems now what to do constitutive models cannot easily handle the history information soils during deformation so what we are going uh, we will go for discrete modeling again discrete modeling is inappropriate for dealing with constitutive models based on a continuum um, approximation so in that case it is very much required to express the large deformation behavior in the form of continuum mechanics so we in that particular then setup when we want to express the large deformation behavior of geomaterials in the framework of continuum mechanics we have one more method called smooth particle hydrodynamics sph method it's founded on mesh free lagrangian scheme this is one of the effective numerical methods this is a evolution stage by stage evolution i am um, referring to the slope stability analysis method this method helps in solving large deformation problems without mesh dis dissociation 
and speech method capable for handle the governing equations and existing constitutive models for geo materials so till now we are able to solve many types of geo technical problems number of interesting achievements were published with the help of smooth particle hydrodynamics sph method career path and job opportunities as we go we can see around us you know there are uh, recently uh, we have our our in our country so many projects are coming in the pipeline our infrastructure sector is booming up and uh, we can see that in india so many projects like around quantum of 25000 crore project all are uh, you know being given to uh, people are bidding for it people are getting such type of projects so so many projects are going on you can see our transportation industry is booming like anything so many projects like uh, involving construction of bridges embankments tunnels so many metros you can see so many metros are there in uh, the in the pipeline of our country deep excavation so wherever you go civil engineering civil engineering is a very you know booming sector nowadays it's a very many it's just a lucrative career nowadays in this uh, engineering uh, geotechnical engineering we will have enough scope for slope stability analysis and uh, we can start we can have btech civil engineering after that people do not give much importance to this area mtech also we just did by you know we did a very little study on slope stability analysis after mtech when you come to the field we will be finding very much physically handicapped if you don't have a proper knowledge on slope stability analysis and soil slope stability if the field which is rampantly used in uh, civil engineering uh, irrespective of the location irrespective of the you know nature of the project so this is an area which if you are aware of the latest concepts and we have a very much solid in fundamentals we have a bright chance of a good future so with that uh, positive note uh, i like to express my gratitude to all the organizers for giving me a chance for giving me a chance to give a presentation on the soil scope soil scope stability thank you thank you very much